Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Puck. Today I am doing my discussion for The Golden Fool by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Tawny Man trilogy. It is the eighth book in the realm of the elderlings. Um, so I think I am gonna do maybe a little non-spoiler section and then talk about the spoiler stuff. Well, this is going to have spoilers for any books previous to this, but non-spoiler for this specific book. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one right here. Can you see that? Yes. All right, there we go. Don't fall over. Thinking about it. I think it's gonna be okay. All right, so first of all, let's just start off with where are we? Like, where are things at at the beginning of the book? Um, so, this starts up um, almost immediately after the sec the first book, Fool's Errand. We are at Buck Keep. Um, Fitz is mourning the death of Night Eyes. Uh, Prince Dutiful is mourning his cat. Uh, the Fool, Fitz and the Fool are still posing as uh, Lord Golden and Tom Badgerlock, his servant. The Out Islanders are at Buck Keep, and the Out Islander princess, who's supposed to marry Dutiful, is there to discuss their like betrothal arrangements, I guess. Um, and the Piebalds are still a threat. So, as would be expected, this book is very political. Um, the scope of it is very much focused on Buck Keep and Buck Keep Town. We're following Fitz as he's kind of settling back into Buck Keep after living on his own for so long and kind of getting back into the politics and everything that's going on in Buck Keep. Um, this one definitely felt very much like a middle book to me. Uh, there isn't a lot of like forward moving plot and it's hard to describe what the plot of this is because there isn't like a central thing I felt like was really happening. It's really focusing on the politics, the characters, and the relationships and really developing those and making sure that we understand the whole stage for everything that is going on and kind of getting everybody into the place that they need to be in. Um, and so in a lot of ways, this is not what I was expecting this book to be, because from the description that I had read of it, uh, it said something about like dragon hunting. So I was kind of expecting for like at least part of the book to for them to at least start their like journey to like hunt down this dragon. Um, and so I think for the first half of the book, I was kind of waiting for that to happen, for like something to happen. Um, and then eventually realized like, oh, that's that's not happening in this book. So I think that that part of the plot that is like dragon hunting is going to happen in the third book. And this is all set up for that and was really getting us like firmly rooted in, you know, the characters reacquainted with the politics um, and setting up everybody and where they're supposed to be. That really sets them off on that like dragon hunting journey, whatever that turns out to be, because I have a feeling it's not going to be what anybody is expecting it to be. But the fact that it focused mostly on like the characters, the relationships and the politics, like that didn't bother me. I think the only reason I was kind of thrown off by it was because I was expecting something different based on the like blurb on the back of the book. But overall, since I'm much more of a character focused reader and I really like it when these books focus on the characters, I really enjoyed this. Um, I really liked the development of the relationships and that we had some good like character growth. I think that Fitz really developed as a character in this one. We also got to see more of his relationship with Hap as the two of them are kind of settling into this new arrangement for their lives and Hap is kind of growing up and figuring out like who he's going to be. Um, we also got some crossover from characters from the Live Ship Traders series, uh, which was kind of fun. So overall, I did really enjoy this. I really liked the character and relationship development that we got, and I loved how uh, complex the maneuverings got to be in this because it was such a focused scope to the story. And I gave this one, I think four stars, maybe like 3.75, but overall, really liked it. Okay, so that is 
pretty much all of the non-spoilerish things I have to say about this and then we're gonna get into the more spoilery section of this. Now this may not be as um, detailed or organized or like coherent as I was originally planning because I read this book in July and it is now October when I am filming it. This video may not even get out until November so it has been a few months <laughs> since I read this book. Um, so I still have stuff that I want to talk about because I do obviously remember a lot about it but it may not be quite as like detailed or coherent as I was originally planning for this video to be. But all right spoilery part. Let's get started. So really one of my favorite things about this was Fitz's development in this book and the character work that went into him in this one because Fitz as a character is one that I have had a hard time really feeling like I know him. Um, in the original trilogy, in the in the Farseer trilogy, I just never felt like I really knew his character. I, it felt very one note that his his personality was just like loyalty above all else and that was it. I didn't feel like there was a lot else to him as a person, which I know is an unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people adore Fitz and like think that he is very well developed and they understand him very well. That was not my experience with him. He felt very one note and I didn't really like him that much. I feel like in this series, um, I feel like I'm really getting to know him better. And I think part of that is because he's getting to know himself better um, because he has he's a little bit older in this series. He's had some time on his own to develop his personality outside of his role in Buckkeep um, and maybe had some time for like personal reflection and that kind of thing. Um, and so I really liked his development of self-awareness and I think he's like there are definitely some things in The Golden Fool that he really figured out about himself. One thing that he realized about himself is that he's not very good at reading people. Like he's not good at understanding what other people are like thinking and feeling. And I was like, you're just realizing this now? Like, oh my god, how long did this take? Because like, yeah, he's never been super good at like, reading other people, which was always something I was kind of confused about if he was meant to be the person who kind of um, takes up like after Shade and like if he was supposed to become the new like assassin who like takes on Shade's role. Like Fitz is not a person who's good enough at understanding other people's like thoughts, feelings, motives, like any of that to kind of keep track and move people and pieces the way that Shade does. So like that was never going to work out. Um, and in this one, he like has, in The Golden Fool, he has like this epiphany of like, oh my god, I'm not good at reading people. And it's like, really? You just figured this out. Um, but you know what? I appreciate somebody gaining some self-awareness. I, that's one of the things that matters so much to me in characters that like, Self-awareness is something that I really appreciate in characters, even if it's just a tiny bit, they don't have to be the most self-aware person, but if they have just like a glimmer of self-awareness, like I'm here for it. So I appreciate that he is really developing at least a little bit of self-awareness. Um, something else that I thought was interesting that he kind of realized was how other people see him and sort of the role that he plays in other people's lives, because that was something else that I think he he hadn't really like thought that much about what role he's contributing or playing in other people's lives. Especially in this one, the role that he plays in Prince Dutiful's life and in um, Thick's life because he keeps kind of gaining these like young like these young boys, young men that he becomes like a mentor to or like a father figure to some of them because he, oh, he also has Hap. Um, and so he's sort of like collecting these young people that he's becoming this mentor father figure to and he's really starting to think of himself in that way or at least realize that other people see him in that way and see that he has this ability to uh, mentor people, to nurture people, to help like raise them in a way and to be this like responsible figure that is formative in these young people's lives. Um, and that's something that he, I don't think he really saw himself in that way 
and he didn't really realize that he had that ability to like play that role in somebody's life until now when he's kind of like collecting these young people to kind of like mentor. Um, so I also liked that, that he's kind of like learning what role he's playing in other people's lives as well and that that role has kind of expanded. It's not just you know being an assassin because he was really never that good at being an assassin anyway. Um, and now it's more of this like father figure nurturing role which actually suits him a lot better. And then of course another significant relationship thing that happened in this book was between Fitz and the Fool because it is finally revealed to Fitz that the Fool is in love with him. Um, and that whole scenario like Fitz just handled the whole thing so poorly. Uh, and yeah but that's out there now. Now they have at least somewhat talked about it. And then just some other like quick things. One is I was so mad at Shade the whole time in this book because his whole thing about like wanting to learn his farseer powers and how like he was robbed of his birthright or something like that and like I understand where he's coming from with that but like the way he goes about it was just infuriating. <laughs> like it's so irresponsible and selfish the way he goes about it and I know that he feels like it's justified and that any selfishness is justified because of the circumstances and what he's been put through and how it's been withheld from him and like all of this stuff but I was just so mad at him the whole time and I was just like I just want to punch him. <laughs> so angry. <laughs> and of course there are a bunch of people that I am now very suspicious of after this book. I am of course very suspicious of the Out Islander princess who has like the dragon tattoo on her back because she's up to something shady and even if it's not her, the other, there's somebody who is like controlling her in some way that's very I'm very suspicious of also. I'm also really suspicious of that guy Webb but one of the things that surprised me is that I I'm surprisingly not that suspicious of Rosemary even though like she has proven that in the past that she like would betray people. Like I mean she might still, I, I'm not out like writing her off as like oh we can just totally trust her but I'm not like particularly suspicious of Rosemary so there's that. Um, but yeah so those are all of my thoughts that I can remember this many months after reading the book um, on The Golden Fool. Uh, if you've made it this far and you have read the book, let me know what you thought about the book in the comments. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!